Are you shocked? Disappointed? Did Canon embarrass themselves with the latest firmware update for the R5, firmware 1.8.1? Did they make a mockery of Canon EOS R5 users? Why am I asking all these questions? Well, if you take a look at the comments for the latest video where I talk about the firmware update 1.8.1, where we get pixel shift, wow, there's an awful lot of negative comments. And yes, there's some disappointment, but I'm talking about some really strong negative comments, some hatred, some frustration, and even some calling for leaving Canon. So why is this? After all, we didn't get anything broken in the firmware update, and Canon didn't take anything away. Details coming up, but first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe, share, choose all notifications, like, comment, and all that good stuff. It's greatly appreciated. It means an awful lot to me, but most importantly, it really helps this channel grow. After weeks of hype surrounding the big firmware update for the Canon EOS R5, Canon released firmware 1.8.1, giving 1.8.0 a miss. Canon also released firmware 1.7.1 for the Canon 1DX Mark III, firmware 1.4 for the Canon EOS R3, and firmware 1.0.3.1 for the Canon EOS R5C. Many were disappointed that instead of getting one big massive firmware update for the Canon EOS R5, we instead are getting a whole bunch of minor updates, starting with this one where we got pixel shift. Jim commented, wow, what an embarrassment. Jay commented, this is BS. What a mockery to R5 users. Who really needs 400 megapixel pixel shift? They really don't know what the users want added. But some were even more critical, saying, Canon is full of crap. I'm trying to hang in with Canon. But these weren't isolated comments. The big update in firmware 1.8.1 was Pixel Shift, a technology that allows Canon EOS R5 owners with firmware update 1.8.1 to shoot 400 megapixel images. Although you can't do it in RAW, it's just limited to JPEG. And really, there are no other options in the camera. Basically, you can turn it on or not, and that's really it. And specific to that enhancement, 8.56pm says, it's JPEG only. It's completely useless. There's no point in using the Pixel Shift feature. When I see a lot of anger and disappointment in the comments, I take a step back. And while these comments weren't directed towards me, I was kind of surprised. And I understand people being disappointed because we were expecting all the rumors telling us, including this channel, that we're getting a major firmware update to the Canon EOS R5. But I spent some time thinking about this. And well, I asked myself a very simple question. Did Canon take away any features with this firmware update? And the answer is no. Then I asked, well, did Canon cripple the camera in any way with, these, with this firmware update? And again, the answer is no. I've come to believe from my viewpoint, that is, that the disappointment, let's call it that disappointment, in the firmware update from Canon for the R5 firmware 1.8.1 comes down to really two things. The first thing is we had so much, well, excitement, so much anticipation, rumors talking about this big firmware update coming to the Canon EOS R5. And of course, I channel this information too. I'm part of the discussion. This is a news and rumors channel after all. The pre-buffer shooting, the image stabilization control, focus breathing compensation. I mean, those three alone would have been, well, a big boon in this update. We were also expecting a lot of updates in terms of the autofocus system. So general improvements in terms of what it could track from motorcycles, trains, and planes to better subject recognition of other animals and insects. And of course, one of the reasons for the firmware update and one of the biggest disappointments is the discussion over pixel shift and whether it was worthwhile or not, whether it was a gimmick. And well, let's take a look at some of the comments. On the weekend, Canon Europe prematurely released this information about their new pixel shift technology capable of delivering a 400 megapixel image. This further drove up demand, further chumming the waters for excitement, waiting for this anticipation for this massive, this big firmware update. While this channel is all about delivering the latest news and rumors, considering all the major camera brands from Canon, Nikon, Sony, including Pentax, Panasonic, and OM Systems, it is just that. These are news and rumors. Now, when rumors come out, until we actually get the final announcement in terms of a news release, it is just that. It's, it's unvalidated. And even the rumors that come out as a CR2 or CR3, like this one from Canon Rumors saying that, yes, we're definitely getting a major firmware update for the Canon EOS R5. What often happens in the rumor chain is it's not just coming from one person. The chain of custody is all over the place. There might be five or even more people where the information passes from. And while these people are reliable, 
Have you ever played Broken Telephone? We used to play this as a kids, and if you want to try it for fun now, do it with some of your friends just to see how basic information can change when it goes from one person to another, even if those people are reliable. And that's why when it comes to news and rumors, I like to get excited about certain things like this because we're getting additional capabilities and enhancements to cameras that we're currently shooting with. And usually that's a good thing, so I like to get excited about it. And while I wasn't the source for these rumors, I definitely bear some of the responsibility. And what I try to do with every rumor is I try to couch them in saying, look, this is how credible it is. This is how much it's been validated. And I think this is a, this rumor, I think it's going to happen, or I think this one doesn't sound right at all. Remember that 24 to 105 f2.8? I really, it was a rumor. It came out on the internet, came out on Canon rumors, but I just didn't believe it. It didn't make sense. Not with a 24 to 105, not with a 24 to 70, what, f2.8? Why would we buy the 24 to 105? And a lens like that would be more expensive and it would definitely be heavier. And of course, when it comes to covering firmware updates, I always recommend waiting to see how this firmware affects other people's cameras before you rush out to apply the update. But the question I have for you is, why does Canon deserve so much frustration, so much blame, so many comments about hating Canon, being upset, being shocked, and that R5 users are being mocked here when Canon didn't make any promises about the firmware update for the R5. They've never made any promises for any firmware updates other than a few times when the, the overheating came out. Remember the first time the camera came out, there was so much bad press over overheating and Canon came out and said, look, we're going to address this. We're going to look into it. And they did. They came out with firmware 1.1 which now allowed the camera to shoot in many more environments. And if you put it in a fridge like EOS HD did, well, the camera would cool down based on ambient temperature. And then firmware 1.6 came out where now we can shoot at 96 degrees Fahrenheit, unlimited 8K RAW in 8K over sample 4K or 4K HQ. Canon has never made any promises in what they would put in firmware updates. Certainly not focus breathing, certainly not removing the 30 minute record limit. Although actually, no, that one's not completely true. Because back in July 2020, a Canon technical rep in an interview with AV Pro TV did say that it's going to be going away. And technically, well, it has been going away. The R3, the R10, the R7, the R6 Mark II, well, that 30 minute record limit is now gone, but you did have to buy a new camera. But at no point did they say it's going to be removed in a firmware update. They didn't make any promises in 2020, no promises in 2021, no promises in 2022, and they certainly haven't made any promises here in 2023. So Canon hasn't come out and said that they're going to remove anything or they haven't added anything to firmware updates. They haven't destroyed any cameras by producing a firmware update that's basically bricked all the R5 cameras. But we've been hearing about this big firmware update. It started with Canon rumors teasing us with some information. I jumped on that. I started putting out videos talking about this massive big firmware update. And here we are today with firmware update 1.8.1 for the Canon EOS R5. It does provide pixel shift and some other enhancements, but we also have a firmware update for the Canon EOS R3 and a four-year-old Canon 1DX Mark III and the R5C. And actually that update to the R5C with Canon Log3 when you're not shooting or when you're shooting with MP4 or AV or XAVC, uh, it is much improved based on what I'm hearing in the comment section down below. And I do understand your frustration with pixel shift. There's no raw option. There are no other options. When you turn it on in camera, basically you can turn it on or off. It's enable or disable. And I understand for a five series camera, which is aimed at photographers that are professionals, that this is their bread and butter. This is a money-making machine. I would expect capabilities that are more aligned with a pro shooter than, well, a hobbyist. For this to come out in the R8 or, well, any other camera below that, sure, yeah, I can understand that. but. The R5, and for that reason, I certainly understand your frustration around the IBIS high resolution shooting mode, which is essentially pixel shift. But is it a reason to get upset with Canon? If you're really upset and frustrated with Canon over this firmware update, please let me know in the comment section down below because I wanna understand your viewpoint. But now here publicly, while I've criticized Canon in the past for not removing that 30 minute record limit, and I will do that again here because I know you're watching Canon, so please, remove that 30 minute record limit in a firmware update for the Canon R5. I'm likely gonna buy the R5 Mark II, but don't make me wait for the R5 Mark II to get that update. It really doesn't need to be there. But that aside, thank you. Um, honestly, thank you for producing all these firmware updates from 1.1.1, which was essential, but starting with 1.3, where we got some rather major updates, Canon Log 3, then the autofocus improvements we saw in 1.5, and then with 1.6, to be able to record unlimited 
8K, raw, 30 frames per second, 4K HQ, at 96 degrees Fahrenheit, around 35 degrees, 36 degrees Celsius. That was pretty impressive. With each firmware update, I feel like this camera is still at the top of its game and that when I look at the competition, I don't go Sony a7R5, boy, that camera looks a lot better. I don't look at the impending Nikon Z8, hoping it's gonna be so good because I'm frustrated with the R5. I'm happy with the R5. And when the R5 II comes out, I'm likely gonna buy it because I do need a second camera. So there's no sense in buying the R5, another R5 right now. I'd rather wait and get the R5 Mark II, but Canon, please do give us or remove that 30 minute record limit. But what you're doing, I, I do appreciate this because we, we've received what? Over 11 firmware updates for the Canon EOS R5 in what? Two and a half, two and three quarter years. And there are very few companies doing that. Sure, Lumix started it all by releasing firmware updates, providing with new, big new capabilities. And some other companies have started doing it as well. Nikon with the Z9, but other companies, Sony, Pentax, OM Systems, well, we do get firmware updates, but they're more or less those old maintenance type firmware updates, fixing things and not really providing any new real large enhanced capabilities. And I just love getting new firmware updates all the time. And what we're probably gonna see over the next couple of months, probably one every 30 to 45 days, is another firmware update to remove focus breathing compensation. Well, not to remove focus breathing compensation, to give us focus, focus breathing compensation, image stabilization control, and improvements to autofocus. Um, that 30 minute record limit though, I really do hope that one is getting removed. But you know, as I said in previous videos, I have my doubts because Canon has had plenty of opportunities to remove that 30 minute record limit and hasn't. And once again, to quote Canon Rumors, Canon Rumors has said that we are getting more firmware updates this year and we will see those enhancements and capabilities come out in these further updates. Canon Rumors didn't say when, but well, we just got one here in March. So maybe we might get one in April, maybe right around NAB, and then maybe one in May. We'll just have to wait and see. And if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news and rumors, specifically regarding the Canon EOS R5 firmware updates or R3 firmware updates, go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications. By choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a new video like this one here, you'll get notified, but make sure you check your email, spam, and junk mail folder because a lot of times those notifications get put in there. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in to watch this video. Again, if you're really upset, very angry with Canon over this, not just a mild disappointment, please let me know your viewpoint in the description or in the comment section down below and give me plenty of information because it helps me understand my audience and why people are so much upset. And maybe even it'll help Canon as well because I know Canon does watch my videos. I just don't know if they read the comments or not. And if you wanna to get to Canon and you're really disappointed, well then send them an email or reach out to their website and provide them with feedback. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.